Upstream is a mobile commerce platform for digital services and goods in emerging markets. So what does that mean practically and in more um, easy uh, terms? It means that in emerging markets, we're the platform that runs all of the customer acquisition, all of the localization and delivery of digital services, and all the billing and monetization of digital services and goods. And we're doing that in 45 countries today. Uh, we have 80 million paying subscribers uh, and we have access to 1.2 billion consumers. In the markets where we are, you have a very wide range of phones and some of them are as old as our first or very first mobile phones, all, to the way, all the way up to actual Android phones. Then those are prepaid markets. What does prepaid mean? It means that people go and physically purchase some scratch card they scratch the card, they send a code, and this is how they put credits to their phone, and that the hack, then they can purchase some goods or some uh, bundles or all those kind of things. Those are unbanked markets. This is very important. What it means is that people do not have access to any kind of digital currency, digital money, and the airtime on their phone is the only way they have to digitally pay for services. This is very, very important. I went over all of those specificities simply because we're a technology company. So the first thing that allowed us to be very successful is the innovation on the technology side in order to serve those particular um, parameters and characteristics of those markets. The innovative technology, that's, that's the center of, of, of everything we do. What we've been doing up until now, um, we've been kind of part of this um, um, very, very big growth of the um, access to digital service and goods in those markets via the mobile. So uh, as the mobile penetration was going, those people could start consuming some services and some product digitally and we were part of that ecosystem. Now there is the next revolution that is coming, which is data. More and more in those markets, people are having access to data, they're having access to smartphones, and this is the next step of the digital revolution that you're having in emerging markets. And our strategy and what we're working on is to be very, very close to the mobile operators who are a central part of that ecosystem to uh, build this next step with them. What's absolutely key is relevance. You have anything you offer needs to be um, compatible, need to serve the needs of those particular markets. I'm just going to give you a few practical examples. Uh, First of all, when people, when you know that people are paying with their prepaid balance, you know that they don't always have available balance on their, uh, sometimes they don't have credits. Um, what it means is also that you cannot set the kind of, the way you're gonna put the pricing on a product cannot be the same as the one you will have in the West. In the West, you can have Netflix and you're gonna pay for $7.99 a month and that's it. And you're gonna be charged every month. If you try to do that in emerging market in such a simplistic way, you're going to fail. You're going to fail to the extent that you'll only be able to successfully charge 5% of your paying subscribers. For all the others, you're gonna, just going to have failed charge attempts. So you need to take into consideration how people actually recharge their credit so that you know how to structure your price point, so you know how when to try to charge them so that they have access to the service. And this is just one example um, in our market people have devices that very often have very low storage capabilities. It means that you cannot have apps or anything they will download to their phone that is too heavy. They simply don't have the storage for that. The quality of the network is very bad. So you have a series of, we can call them challenges or opportunities that you have to address. If you want to be successful, your technological uh, approach has to be relevant to those markets. In a kind of very basic way, you could say that we have uh, a lot of local employees, we have local offices, and we're kind of participating in the economic life of the country, that's one. Um, the second one is the mobile dev device and its penetration allow you to give access to services that people uh, could not consume in any other way. And I'm going to give you a few examples. One of our most successful um, service is an English language lesson service that we have available throughout all platforms. You can even 
start to learn basic English via just simple text message, when that's what your device can do, all the way up to full Android smartphone application where you have voice and you have video and you have all the multimedia capabilities. So that's one example. Another example is a micro-insurance service that we have. We've launched one recently in Vietnam uh, where people suddenly have the opportunity to access a basic health coverage. Simply, uh, they purchase it uh, via their phone. This is how they understand how it works. And they suddenly get financial coverage that they will not have access to uh, in any other way. We also have some basic health services uh, where people can understand what's happening to them, can share the symptom and they can get some basic explanation of what, um, what they're going through. Uh, so the, the, the big opportunity that you have with the mobile device in those markets is suddenly you have mass penetration, everybody has a device and also everybody can pay for premium services with their device and with the airtime. This is this is the opportunity that you have. This loan is about us having the ability to invest in R&D, in uh, more uh, innovative technologies, without uh, having to take into consideration any of the kind of uh, small uh, microeconomics fluctuation that we will have. So we can keep investing again and again in R&D without to worry about what's happening this year or that other year. And this is very, very important for us. Um, and uh, this has allowed us to grow our engineering team and to keep investing in our technology. The levels to which you have access to funds in the US is just not comparable. Uh, what you have on the West Coast, you have a lot of money that is there to invest in new ideas and new technologies. But also the mindset um, that in, which, um, in which people are when looking at ideas. One of the things you're going to see in Europe is um, having a um, post-revenues company being funded is a bit more complicated. Having ideas that were, you know, that are still at a very early stage, they're not going to get that level of funding. You need to be. Your, Europe is more risk averse than what you're going to have in the U.S., and that's certainly uh, one of the challenges that you have in Europe today. Now, uh, obviously, the market, right? If whenever you're starting a technology company in the U.S., you have a market that's just right there, that's quite uniform. It's also English speaking, can have us like some uh, cultural uh, commonalities. You don't have, Europe is still quite fragmented to that, on that sense, uh, in that sense. Um, then, you know, there, there's also kind of, uh, I, I think it's changing, but you still have a little bit of this, um, Europeans are more cynical or critical. So you have that great thing in the US where if you tell them that I'm gonna go to the moon with that bicycle, they look at the moon. If you tell the same thing to someone in Europe, you know, that they're just going to start questioning how, how this bicycle can just ever go to the moon. You, you still have that. No, I think that, you know, I, I, I think that can change and I think that it's going better. Um, I, I think that uh, not only uh, the UK, but also you start having, by the way, a very strong startup culture in France. Uh, th there, there is something that's coming up uh, and, and I think we should be, we should be seeing more. I joined Upstream quite early, uh, but it was obvious from the very start, and that came from its founders, that this was an environment where you were encouraged to try. And failure was embraced. This is very, very important. Uh, having fa having three, three failed startups in the US is actually a good thing on your CV. I don't think it's a great thing in the EU. Uh, so one of the things that was very unique to upstream, and I'm still trying to make it, uh, to keep that uniqueness, is that failure was really encouraged. It was almost celebrated. As long as you knew why you failed, as long as you kind of had a rationale and a plan when you tried that, and you understood the reasons of your failure so that next time you could be successful. And that was really unique. Uh, you will never ever feel, uh, basically trying was also celebrated. So it was more about trying and it was more about um, being clear about what are the steps and what is the process to properly try to analyze the reasons of your failure, to be in a, in a position to capture the data that are going to explain your failure. And that was actually, the, those, those are the first steps to success. And I don't think historically we've ever, ever succeeded before failure, uh, before failing. Uh, that has never happened. We failed first and then we succeeded. And this is the kind of thing that we're trying very hard to still keep, although we're growing. Uh, we're, trying, we're trying to explain to people that 
they should have ideas, they should think out of what the processes are, they should feel that they have access to anyone in the company if they think there are ways to improve. And as long as we have a rationale for doing something, we're going to welcome it and we're going to encourage it. But we feel an opportunity to help the ecosystem. Um, first of all, Upstream is, uh, is a company that has already kind of generated other companies. Um, out of Upstream, uh, there's a company called Intellibox that was born. There's a company that's called Workable that was born from two ex-Upstreamers. And uh, I co-founded myself a spin-off out of Upstream that's called Persado, that's headquartered in the US and it's now having its own story and it's becoming almost equal size to what Upstream is. But our responsibility, if you want to use that word, is to help building the ecosystem. And that is very important. The way to build an ecosystem is to kind of um, encourage that culture of trying and make sure that you're going to grow up people that could be the next successful entrepreneur. Now for that to really happen, and that's one of the limitations that you currently have, and that's changing, that's going to take time. You need to have an ecosystem of companies that are successful, that are exiting, meaning that there is a series of people that are getting rewarded for that, and then they have the funds to start their own uh, project and then go and, and have their own company. And that takes time and that doesn't happen from one day to another. There is an incredible pool of very talented and highly educated people in Greece. Uh, this is very clear. And uh, most of them are very, very eager to work hard and to succeed. Uh, and, and this is one of the very big advantages of Greece. Now, um, the one thing you have, which, like the limitation that you have is that because the, at least the technology ecosystem is smaller than in other markets, uh, you're not going to find a lot of experienced people having the right and relevant experience. So it's not like there are other five upstreams in Greece and we can just you know, uh, go and find the right people in one of those other companies. And this is the issue that we have. Um, by, by, by the way, we, don't have, we have 29 nationalities at upstream, so we also have a lot of members of the EU uh, <laughs> working with us here and then obviously of, uh, from other countries. In a very like, kind of practical way, cost of operation is uh, better than what you will have in uh, New York, San Francisco or even London, uh, that's one. Uh, then you have access to that quite large pool of very talented uh, and uh, well-educated people. Uh, especially on the engineering side, we really have very, very strong engineers. Um, then, that, that becomes kind of a personal comment, but I think that's one of the greatest places ever to be on Earth, like on a daily basis, it's just, just a beautiful country.